if she starts scratching and you know the scratching is she again shaking the bed then she settled herself and then but every once in a while I'm like my spidey senses would be like I'm feeling the action of on the bed I'm feeling the action of shaking I'm feeling the action of her doing all of her rituals before she turns around but something is not right something feels off and so I reach down to like do my touch and nothing is there welcome back to episode two of my views extended i am your host nadia thank you so much for joining me again this week yeah this is just the podcast where i talk about my um health journey anything that piques my interest kind of inspires me motivates me and um yeah i just just talk because i because i can so thank you so much for joining me again uh let's see this so last week i was talking about my kind of spiritual and mental and physical journey back to health and a little bit of an update i have um because i had a food allergy test done a couple months ago like just before christmas time and i was eliminating how to eliminate all wheat eggs dairy oats almonds and a couple other things from my diet and so i did that and have done that and um the hardest thing for me so far has been the chocolate because the dairy hasn't been that bad because i pretty much is only eating like butter occasional ice cream and cheese so that part wasn't too difficult but you know there's a lot of um dairy products or dairy byproducts and a lot of other foods so that was a little tougher but i managed so i have been eating chocolate still at night time you know when those sweet cravings hit and you're like i want some chocolate and so you know i gave in getting back to exercising again not as hard and as much as i want to but slowly incorporating you know weights and resistant band works and my yoga i can't remember the name of it but anyway some other stuff and then walking is my cardio that feeling of like because you know i've been working with my naturopathic doctor and like basically I'm eliminating all those foods from the allergy test because my body is producing a lot of inflammation. My cortisol levels are super high because I'm always stressed all the time. I'm always worrying. I'm always in that kind of flight or fight mode. And so we're working on bringing down my cortisol levels, bringing down the inflammation levels of my body. And this past week, I was like the first week where I didn't feel like I was walking around with a thousand hot pokers stuck in every part of my body, which was really nice. I'm still in pain, but it was getting to the point. And I have a very, very high tolerance for pain. But these last several months, several months, it was to the point where I was like literally breaking out crying in the daytime because I was in so much pain. Like I, when I mean it was miserable, miserable can't hide it anymore people were starting to ask me what's wrong are you okay are you limping it was getting bad and this is from a lifetime of pain where it was breaking me down physically and to, that i couldn't even do any physical things anymore i had stopped working out kind of like midsummer of 2023 i'm not really a social butterfly but i was even less of a social butterfly i didn't want to go anywhere i didn't want to do anything go to work all week and on the weekends I would cocoon and I'm like I'm not moving I'm not doing anything I don't have the energy I don't have the mental capacity that feeling like you know a thousand pokers I feel I can like my step is lighter my body feels lighter the pain is reduced down to constantly being like a 12 out of 10 to I can say like a 6 out of 10 the cravings like I said are just the I want chocolate or something sweet but since I can't have like a piece of cake or some cookies or whatever I guess I'm doing that chocolate but I'm, again I'm gonna work on getting that out of my diet but I'm doing really well like my she's happy with my doctor she's happy with the exercise that I'm doing my food continuing to take certain supplements I don't, I'm not gonna net mention because I'm not a doctor and you have to go and speak to your own doctor and get them to help you with that I don't 
It's just, yeah, I'm not in the business of diagnosing anybody without credentials. So yeah, so I'm working on the stress, I'm working on, I'm back to, not that I kind of ever really stopped, because I would talk to, to creator all day long and throughout the night, but getting back to that purposeful before I get stepped out of the bed, thanking and, you know, asking for guidance and protection throughout the day. So that's back to kind of normal. What else, see what else. I had a great session with my massage therapist. Um, he did some um, shiatsu massage. When I went to see him, I literally grabbed his last appointment. It was like 8.45 in the morning and I grabbed it because I can only go like on Saturday or Sunday because I work during the day, I mean during the week. And um, I grabbed his last appointment last, yeah, it was last weekend and Saturday. And like my hips, when I mean my hips, my were on fire. Like I, I was like, uh, uh, like I was literally, I couldn't sleep. I was in pain, like crying, like it was terrible. So I was like, can we work on my my hips and my lower back? And can we do um, some reflexology in my feet? So we did reflexology on my feet, acupuncture with electrical stimulation, and then he worked on my hips as well and back and lower back and whatever. I'm telling you, this man is a healer. He is a healer. Like his one hand in particular, I can't remember if, remember if it's his right or left hand, but this man is a healer. The heat that emanates from his hand is given to him. It's not new natural. It is supernatural. He is a healer. When I left his appointment, like the pain in my foot, I wasn't limping for the first time in probably at least six months. I wasn't limping. He's good. Like he, ooh, to have a gift of healing and to share it with people, it's a lot. Energy work is a lot because I've done energy work and I've drained myself because I don't know how to do it properly and not drain myself. So to do that all day with people is amazing. So let's see what else. So that's good. Oh yeah, and then with the exercise thing with my naturopathic doctor, she, um, cause I was like, I, pain is, is better, but my exhaustion is still there. So she's thinking that between the acupuncture and the eliminating everything and all those food foods that are causing all the inflammation my exhaustion is still there because of basically body getting rid of toxins and you know it's a big adjustment to drop out all of those food groups your body if that's what was causing you issues your body has to get rid of and process all that stuff out of your liver kidneys wherever whatever organs do that stuff so um, that's part of the exhaustion. So I'm working on some other things. So I have some supplements to help keep my cortisol levels down. I'm taking a lavender oil to help with calmness. I take that two, about two times a day. It's a little tablet and it helps with calming. And so yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I have an appointment to see my massage therapist again soon and then I'm going back to her because I have another appointment with another doctor for some other stuff you know you know the um, your yearly stuff as a woman make sure everything is good it was last time and make sure it's good this time and it'll be fine and then so working on hormonal stuff and that's another thing that I don't like that I was really irritating me was because I've noticed like since the it's been like three weeks since I got the results from my allergy test and eliminating all that stuff and then exercising again and getting that um, reflexology treatment and another acupuncture treatment. My body is definitely detoxing because my face is breaking out so bad, like so bad. I was really, really lucky that I didn't have any issues as a child. Like I didn't have any acne breakouts at all as a kid only when I hit 24 all of a sudden my face was like hey surprise 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 and and 
since then it's been an on and off battle and I thought everything had in the last several years I thought everything had kind of um, evened itself out but apparently not so I guess as I'm detoxing um, oh, even though that's not even as I'm detoxing I guess that's going to be part of it my face is breaking out and stuff so I'm kind of not kind of I am very self-conscious about that but it'll pass and I just have to keep drinking a lot of water and eating as clean as possible um, and it, it'll be it'll be fine it'll be fine that's what I have to tell myself it'll be fine it'll be fine but yeah it's, it's great getting you know getting spots and wrinkles and gray hair it's not really fair yeah hmm but yeah so um anyway we're doing it in steps with my naturopathic doctor we're getting my cortisol levels down getting the inflammation down and then we're going to work on even though the, the detoxifying is already begun we are going to that's kind of the steps the first few steps there's several steps that we're going to be going through but yeah and my sleep issues sleep issues are not we're working on sleep sleep is is I thought was kind of getting better but it's not that great because um, the the night sweats have started again and so I'm up like every hour it's horrible I'm either freezing cold or super hot even with the windows open and, and the ceiling fan going so sleep is horrible kind of work is really stressful I found out that while my contract, as long as, you know, my work, they're happy with my work and whatever, and they're happy to have me, but, um, so I'm digesting that and continuing to work on other streams of income. My book, this podcast, my other podcast, other forms of social media, and continuing to keep my resume updated. I'm looking. It's unfortunate. Like I said, I'm disappointed. I'm not too surprised, but I'm, I'm disappointed to be appreciated with an increased salary or increased wages and permanency goes a long way to retain employees. And we'll just leave it at that. Just wanted to do a new segment because I like to listen to stories and I have stories to share and I wanted to do a little segment on ghost stories, supernatural stories, otherworldly stories, strange stories. The story that I wanted to share this week and these are all my stories. I may in the future come back and share a story about other people but for now we're just going to keep it to my story i also wanted to say that i am a writer and i'm a self-published writer and one of my um goals um is to write my own supernatural book about all the supernatural occurrences that have happened throughout my life i had never had a pet i have a pet i have a fi almost 15 in april i have a 15 year old cat named kai She's a black domestic cat and she's a gift and a beauty and I'm actually writing a book about her as well. But with her, I had never had a pet and I currently live in BC and I have, I'm from Ontario and when she was little, like a kitten and younger, she would always sleep at the end of my bed. Well, either at the top or at the end of my bed. I would, she would either come in at the same time as me or just nudge the door open and come in and make settle herself at the end of my, you know, be, at, behind, like at the crook of my knee or like behind my knees or against my legs, some position at the bottom of my body. And so I would just be used to it. And I, you know, I just reached down and pet her, you know, whatever, and, and go back to sleep. You know, so every once in a while she would just decide to stay in the living room or something downstairs and stay in the living room and, and sleep down there, fine. Or sometimes she would sleep on the stairs. I don't know why she would sleep on the stairs in the house. And so I'm sleeping and all of a sudden I'd feel the jump up on the bed and I was like, oh, okay, whatever. And you're kind of a, just awake enough to realize it. And then she would start grooming and, I, and you know, she grooming and you know, when they're grooming, they're kind of like shaking the bed. It's like, damn, why you have to be so aggressive with your grooming? 
and then she would also if she starts scratching and you know the scratching is she again shaking the bed and she settled herself and then every once in a while I'm like my spidey senses would be like I'm feeling the action of on the bed I'm feeling the action of shaking I'm feeling the action of her doing all of her rituals before she turns around but something is not right something feels off and so I reach down to like do my touch and nothing is there so I'm like in the time that I decided in my mind to reach down did she jump off the bed and so I look down my door is closed shut open the door look in the hallway no Kai go downstairs she's in her cat condo fast asleep this happened several times over and over and over again this is from when she was a kitten like a young cat say around one or two she's nearly 15 this happened at least once or twice a month all these years when we moved to BC this would happen again this happened I think the last time it happened was over a year ago maybe more same thing sitting in my bedroom in the apartment doors you know I thought she just because I don't shut it tight so she can come in if she wants to feel that whoop on the bed grooming 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 shake 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 mm. nobody's there go to the living room she's in her cat condo when I tell you I cuss this thing out I'm using bad words because the other times I would just pray pray to my guardian angels pray to my ancestors like we gotta cloak this place we ain't doing this nonsense and the last time it came I had to straight out cuss it out and it hasn't come back interesting thing you can pray but cussing out works just as good for these spirits and entities now I don't know the purpose of this thing I don't first of all how dare you follow me across the country but I don't know the purpose of it if it was just trying to have some kind of human connection I don't know if it was trying to get comfortable to see let me kind of warm myself in and if she accepts me if I can kind of get in and do whatever I don't know if it was just a trickster just trying to have fun but either way it's not welcome it's not welcome so anyway that's just one of my supernatural stories um, with I guess um, we call it the imitator the um, trickster I don't know what it was um, but it wasn't Kai because at first I was thinking hey what if it's her because you know human beings can astrally project what if she's astrally projecting but I was like mm -mm. my spidey senses were tingling that this is not her I have never had a pet before in my life not even a, a, a fish so it's not to say that oh it's just like you know because I do believe that pets can absolutely if we've lost pets they can absolutely come back and visit us and kind of do their same routine as when they were alive so it wasn't a pet coming back to say oh that's you know that's my my previous um pet this was not her and this was something again i don't know the reason but i know it's not welcome so yeah that's my little um story of my little supernatural story i definitely want to incorporate that into my book into audio form maybe go a little more in depth uh, and yeah let me know if you want to hear any more stories I kind of am testing this out to see if I want to do this and if people respond I'll share some more I wanted to kind of take this on to um, and I'm gonna give credit to um, a group that I'm in on fan base and it's an audio group and we were discussing um, all these supernatural things and intuition so thank you guys for the inspiration for this episode too I wanted to talk about intuition 
and how important it is to listen to our intuition. And I'm just going to share it with a little story. I was on the train um, probably the first couple of year or two years that we were in BC and I'm on the sky train and it was kind of full and I was standing at the middle and there's like you know the two pole like or a four pole thing where you can hang on if you're not sitting in a seat so I, I wasn't traveling far I didn't really want to sit down so I was just standing up holding onto the pole and I was facing so when the people were coming in the train I would see them face on as they were coming into the train Everybody was fine. So I was standing there and nobody was behind me. And a really tall, tall, skinny, good looking guy came on. And I instantly kind of was like, hmm. Not hmm in a good way, but hmm. And he moved, stood kind of beside me, but then he moved behind me. And all I could, the vibe I could get was like sinister vibe. And I, my intuition was telling me move, move. Because all in my head was, think, all in my head, in my spirit was saying, if you were alone with him, you would be in trouble. What I mean sinister, like he is not a good person. What I mean, not good person, I mean like he would cause you harm. He would cause you harm in the worst way. Like in the ground harm. The rage and the evil that was emanating off of him. And I immediately moved, swung around, like moved myself from in front of him because he was now behind me and so I could face him away and face him and this made him angrier like what I mean the waves of anger coming off of this man because he didn't have that little bit of power of me not being able to watch him i don't know it's very hard to describe him and some people will be like oh you're just being paranoid and you know if and that's you can feel that way but the wave of rage and anger and you would be in trouble if you were alone with me i was just like nah and thankfully my stop came up next but all this to say if you are in a space and your gut is telling you leave leave if you're driving somewhere and you're supposed to be going this way and something tells you go that way you go that way i don't care if you just get to some place and you literally just got there took off your shoes if something a spirit is telling you if your angels are telling you if your ancestors are telling you get up and leave you get up and leave leave listen to your gut and today's random because I'm a kind of a random person sometimes like I can be very logical but all of a sudden if something's in my mind I'm like hey what about this so I'm gonna put it um incorporate a little randomness I was again on social media and I have this question and nobody's been able to answer this why do people for example, I'm just going to use black and white. Why do people, when somebody sees a biracial person and they're with a black person and they just say they're a black couple or they're a couple, but how come when the same biracial black and white person is with a white person, they're like, oh, it's their interracial couple. If the biracial person is both and in one they're black, they're just a black couple and in the other they're interracial couple but wouldn't they just be a couple because they're white as well as they are black as well now let me preface this by saying that i know that you know people are going to say about the one drop rule i do not believe in the one drop rule that is the stupidest most ignorant thing um we all know i hope we all know by now that race was created race is a social construct meant to divide people the masses the the, the the poor masses fighting. We know that the one drop rule is stupid. Again, meant to keep the 
white rice pure? And I've been asking this question for well over a decade. How are you an interracial couple when your white partner and you're white too? That doesn't make any sense to me. You're just a couple. You're just as much white as you are black. Like, I don't believe in this whole, like, um, you are what you, your father is because that just falls under that same category of the one drop rule. We're not gonna, um, we're not going to dismiss, you know, biology and facts. You know, it takes an egg and a sperm to make a human being. So this thing of you are what your father, you're, you are what your, your father is, is stupid. Because for example, I'm a black woman if my husband, if I made a baby with a white man, under that rule, my child would be white, but I'm a black woman. So how am I making a white child? The child is both. But then you have, if the father's black and the mother is white, under that same foolishness, the child is black. But again, takes egg and a sperm and the mother's white. So how is the child only black? So we're back to the social construct thing. Did I ever say that humans are kind of an earth is base? I don't really like it here. I'm not looking to die anytime soon. I would like to die well into my 80s, but, or excuse me, ooh, ooh, well into my 90s. Earth is base. I'm gonna get into that at another point too. I have a lot of spiritual things in my head that I want to discuss. And I would, I would actually love to eventually bring on some more people so we can have like a fuller discussion. But anyway, back to this thing. I have yet to hear a, a, a reasonable, rational answer in 20, I guess 2024 now, of why a black and white biracial person with another black person is just a black couple or a couple, but a biracial black and white person with a white person is interracial when that's part of them as well. Please, I'm, I'm looking for answers. Don't be rude. So again, thank you so much for tuning in to My Music Extended and I will see you next time. Bye.